Joining the show with us now this morning, Yes Network broadcaster and host for the New York Yankees as well as the Brooklyn Nets, Miss Nancy Newman. Nancy, big offseason for baseball this year. A lot of free agents out there, particularly starter pitchers. The Yankees, I feel like a lot of Yankee fans would agree with me that the Yankees lacked that one ace, like the Astros had in Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole and Zach Greinke. Bad example with talking about aces in their starting rotation, but still there was that piss or the the piece missing in the Yankees starting rotation. Who do you feel like on this current free agency market do you feel like would make the most sense for the New York Yankees? You know, that's a valid point and a valid point of view. I understand why fans feel that way and a lot of professionals in the business as well. You know, when I spoke to Brian Cashman, we had a great sit down interview just before the playoffs began. And I asked him, you are going into this postseason bullpen reliant. Is that the game plan? How comfortable are you? And his answer was very interesting to me because he said, yes, we are comfortable. And that actually was the plan. So I think that they knew they were lacking in the traditional way with regard to an ace starter, but they thought the bullpen would make up for that. Obviously losing her mind was a big blow. Mm. And I think now there might be an expanding to the thinking. As you heard Brian say, there's not going to be as much focus on the luxury tax moving forward, at least right now. And they are all in from every report that I'm hearing on the Garrett Cole market. So to circle back and answer your original question, I think he has to be the the number one target, don't you? I definitely think Garrett Cole, I mean, for all of the 2019 season, Nancy, he I, I've said it multiple times, he is the best pitcher in the world. And to also answer your point about how the Yankees were hoping they, they would just almost per se get by with the stunning bullpen that they had, let alone not without Dylan Batanchez the whole season except for that one inning. And Dylan Batanchez, when he's on, he is the best reliever in baseball. But again, the point is, you're not facing the Baltimore Orioles in the postseason. You're going up against the team like a Houston Astros with the best starting rotation in baseball. So it's so tough to try to get six plus innings out of your bullpen, especially when you're facing guys like Verlander, Cole, and Grinky. So true, Alex. And I'm reminded of what Zach Britton said following the final game of the season. It was really telling. He said, you know, we are relievers for a reason. And if they're going to see us every single day, we're going to get nicked up. And that's pretty much what happened. Yes, it's great to have this bullpen, which is outstanding, uh, throughout the regular season. But in the postseason, when you face the same team day in and day out, game after game, you're going to get exposed. How important do you think Aaron Boone has meant to this 2019 team? I feel like he kind of should have been the manager of the year, particularly just because of how much adversity he had to face with injuries. I'm in 100% agreement. He would have gotten my vote had I had one. He is a tremendous human being. He's a very intuitive guy. He's a very smart guy. He takes the pulse of not only the room, but each individual. He just has a knack for it, and he's a smart baseball man. That's bred in him, as we know. He's perfect for this job. He's absolutely perfect for for this job. And nothing against Kevin Cash and Rocco Baldelli, but Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I think for the reasons you stated, he should have won. Again, we'll switch gears now, Nancy, and talk what's going on in the baseball world today and in the past week. uh, Houston Astros have really kind of taken over the baseball, just social media, and especially with the whole controversy going on with the sign stealing. And Alex Rodriguez said it best on the Michael K show last week. He said, as soon as you start bringing technology into the game with sign stealing, that's the issue. Sign stealing it traces back to the very beginning. And I said it in Little League, people are stealing signs. But I don't have a problem with sign stealing. It's when the fact of the matter is you're bringing technology into the game. Yes, Major League Baseball has to decide where the boundary is. In the past, it was rather vague. 
Prior to the start of this season, I remember Commissioner Manfred issuing a statement, or perhaps it was part of the rules changes, mm. but he strongly suggested that all teams refrain. I remember he used that word, refrain, from use of technology within games and with regard to sign stealing. You know, you start putting cameras out there in center field. Remember a couple of years ago in 2017, there was that incident with the Red Sox, and, mm-hmm. and one of our, our Red Sox representative was wearing an Apple Watch or something mm-hmm. close to the dugout, something like that. But these Astros... I'm I'm finding also that there seems to be a lot of people that want to discuss it with some knowledge. So mm. it's it's an anti astro sentiment and rightfully so. This is beyond and, and it's about establishing that boundary. Do you feel like if you were the commissioner of the league right now, Nancy, and it, it you had a task on the desk, you had phone calls from the twenty nine other GMs and the presidents of every other team that want there to be a punishment to the Houston Astros, what would be the most realistic punishment to the Houston Astros, particularly in the the, the true evidence? I mean, even though we don't have exact evidence, we just have word of mouth uh, from the 2017 use of sign stealing in the postseason, what would be your punishment to the Houston Astros today? What a complicated issue, right, Alex? I think, first of all, they have to finish their investigation, right, and see what they actually do have in terms of real hard evidence. But this has to be more than a slap on the wrist. It has to be much, much more than that. I'm reminded of Sean Payton sitting out for a year for the Saints in the NFL. Um, I would not be opposed to A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau not having anything to do with the organization for an entire year suspension, mm-hmm. something like that. I don't want the punishment to be anything that punishes fans, like um, you know anything with on-field play. I want the, the fans of the Astros to still get a great product. But I, I, I think the, the organization needs to be slapped beyond just a hit on the wrist, don't you? I definitely agree, and I feel like now this is when it comes even more layers to this story, particularly, Nancy, because if you go back to 2017, who was involved in that Astros team? Alex Cora and also Carlos Beltran. And now those are also two current managers in the game of baseball, Alex Cora with the Boston Red Sox and Carlos Beltran, the new manager for the New York Mets. So now it now becomes a league-wide issue even more so So now, how do you deal with that issue? For me, that's too much of a stretch at this point Mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, Carlos Beltran was an active player. I cannot fault him. Even if he took part of it, he was an active player. I think players need to be kept out of it. I, I would not do anything personally against any of the players. Alex Cora, of course, he was a coach, but um, I, I think that if you suspend A.J. Hinch and Jeff Luno for a year, I think that's more of the right track mm-hmm. instead of the guys that were part of the trickle-down effect. Mm-hmm. I definitely agree with you. And now, Nancy, we'll switch gears and talk about your career, particularly now, again, working for the Yes Network. How much fun is it working with guys like John Flaherty and David Cohn and just all the great guys, Jack Curry and everyone else for the Yes Network? Alex, it's just so great. You know it is. That's why you're entering this business and doing so well. Congratulations on everything you've done so far. Uh, The New York State Uh, baseball hall of fame Mm -hmm. event was wonderful which we were both at that Mm -hmm. was tremendous Uh, and i saw the way you work and you should be complimented (laughs) i'm very happy for you um yes it's it's great i I, you know realizing your dreams is a special thing and i know I'm, i'm not alone uh but everyone that gets to live their dream has that feeling and I'm certainly fortunate because I have been one of the people to be able to realize uh, the dream that they set out to accomplish. I'm so thankful for all the people along the way, Bill McPhail, the late Bill McPhail, um, Andy McPhail's uncle and the brother of the late Lee McPhail, Mm. who first hired me at CNN when I was just a kid, just graduating. Uh, uh, He said he saw it, and I have him to thank 
for certain, first and foremost. And being here now for almost 17 years and loving the Yankees, growing up in the Niagara region and uh, loving Bobby Mercer and Don Mattingly, like you and I discussed at yeah. the Baseball Hall of Fame and you know, in Albany, um, it's wonderful. These guys are great. And to be able to call them friends and the things that I've learned from people like David Cohn mm. and Ken Singleton, yeah. inside things that you would never ever have privy to and access to the clubhouse as well people like cc sabathia have taught me so many things about clubhouse order and the way guys work and things like that which i'm also interested in not just the x's and o's i like to i really like to figure out what makes guys work like what made mariano mariano you know and i know him well now and i know bernie really well and i can sort Sort of put together in my mind what made them who they are, mm. which enables me to take a look at a younger guy and be able to compare them in my head mm. and and sort of project where I think personally they might head towards things like that. Are you a fan of player comparisons? Um, I don't. I wouldn't say comparisons. No, I just like to find commonalities. Mm. And uh, for exi- for example, excuse me, Glaber Torres, there's something about him and his mentality and his focus that reminds me of Mariano. He does not get phased, but it's in a very, it's in a way that reminds me of Mariano because uh, a DJ LeMahieu, his focus is a stellar, but a quite different uh, approach he, he uses, you know? Mm-hmm. Um so it's more like that, rather than comparisons in terms of, you know, how oh, he's the next Mickey Mantle. That mm-hmm. stuff I'm not into. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. And sometimes player comparisons, they get a little wish-washy, but I, I love the comparison in how their transition and how they act on the field and off the field as well. I, I'd never heard of that before, and, and that's something cool. But also, it should be noted, maybe not a lot of people know about, is you actually worked um in a cover the 2004 olympics yes that was wonderful what an experience that was i actually worked with bob costas there not directly (laughs) but obviously we were there at the same time and uh you and i saw bob at in, in albany at the new york state baseball hall of fame induction um that was a great experience it was five weeks away uh it, it, you live in a compound pretty much the marriott mm. there in ledra it was a beautiful beautiful time um the greek people were amazing i remember covering the marathon and being at the starting point that was a highlight for me uh that's a career highlight it's one of those moments you never forget and I remember calling my sister from the starting line and looking uh, looking around and and really taking in the fact that I was in Greece mm. and I was covering the Olympics and anyone that's in this business a lot of us I would um, bet <laughs> have the Olympics on our bucket list mm. Nancy, this is my favorite part of the show. It's called the Fast Five Quick Round. It's five quick questions, and you have this however long. This is dangerous, long... Alex. This is dangerous. <laughs> it's just five <laughs> quick questions, and you have however long to answer them. Okay. Uh, favorite music. Okay, I will. I'm not embarrassed to say. I'm sorry. I loved George Michael, and I'm going mm. back to the '80s, but. You remember the music that really touched you when you were young. I love George Michael. Do you even know who he is? <laughs> yes, I yes, I actually <laughs> listen. I, I I know George Michael. He's he's awesome. Um, go to snack. Go to snack. Pretzels. Most funny David Cone story. <laughs> I can't tell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no way. There's a lot of those. Um, let me think. Something that's that's okay. Good. Okay. Uh, one time we were all on set. As you know, my batting practice show ends mm-hmm. just before the pregame with Bob and Jack um, and Tony and whoever's in studio at any given time begins, right? And we're just a few feet apart in this new studio setup. So during the break, you know, we'll often talk music and, and things like that. And then uh, there was one time where Coney started to sing. And I thought, 
is this really happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but that, funny. he's just, uh, he's wonderful. He's wonderful in every way. Favorite book. Do you have a favorite book you like to read? Um, uh, let me see. You know, I go through phases. I'm mm-hmm. a person that, um, I've changed a lot <laughs> as I grow. Mm-hmm. And, um, I would say that I I do like biographies. I, I glean a lot of information out of them. I like to see how people that I admire live their lives. And um, the latest one was Audrey Hepburn. And um, uh, there's always a nugget or two that stay with me after I read about and dive into people that, for whatever reason, are resonating for me. And then, Nancy, to wrap up the interview, I just want like to always ask this one question. In you've accomplished a lot in your career. What is one thing that you would love to accomplish next? Um. You know, I've never been one to hardline that. I make sure that I have a vague thought, but I have always stayed open to the roadways because with every step you take, the horizon changes. Mm -hmm. You might walk just a couple of steps and see something that you didn't see just a few back, correct? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I, I, and also we don't know what's going to come next. For example, when I was at CNN, I never would have thought about being at yes, because it wasn't even in existence, Mm. but lo and behold, CNN ends just as yes is starting up. And there I went. So, um, I think that I just want to stay open in terms of seeing what's truly there, but I never really see myself leaving yes i'm i'm happy here this is home Mm -hmm. definitely and then also where can the fuse nation and everyone follow you on social media throughout the yankee off season and to see um all the great work that you do on the yes network thanks alex it's at nancy newman yes both on twitter and on instagram and we're as as we you and I were talking about before we actually started the interview, there's renovations happening right now, so I've been posting renovation updates oh, awesome. in the office. Yeah, yeah. So the carpet is going in and things like that. So um, and also Yankees Magazine is a wonderful show because it's a year round show, and I get to see the guys in the off season. I go to charity events and things like that, so I get to keep up to date, and that's a very great source. Uh, for me and ultimately for fans because I pass on everything that I learn. Yes, well, thank you again so much, Nancy, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the Alex View Show this morning. Thank you, Alex. All the best to you. My pleasure. Thank you.